and we're proud to bring in Mr. Bob Chapman, the man that really knows what's going on about the hyperinflation back there and can give you the exact, well, I wouldn't say the exact, but he can summarize what the Canadians are saying about the money supply in the United States is it's doing something that it's never done before. It's shrinking. And and that's taking into the account of inflation. The Canadians are looking at it in the past, in our previous past, and they're saying it is scary times for investors. They agree that in the position that a, the, in the economic turn town is upon us. In fact, they believe that deflation, the American dollar, is moving ever, ever in closer to hyperinflation. Mr. Bob Chapman, welcome to the show. And do you have any about all of that, or do you have? Would you have something else that's more impressing that you'd like to talk to and inform the military personnel, sir? Well, first of all, thank you. Um, it's nice to be back after all these years. Uh, time <laughs> really speeds by, that's for sure. But. Um, uh, I, I think what's what's going on in markets today uh, is things that have never happened before, or I should say, are things that are never happening have, have never happened before. For that is the debt of the United States is essentially unpayable, and it's called sovereign debt. Uh, it has also uh, been a fact since August of 1988 that the President's Working Group on Financial Markets has been mani <coughs> manipulating the markets over those many years. And I believe that the time for manipulation is going to come to a close over the next couple of years. Uh, what have they been doing? Uh, they've been holding the bond market up by buying bonds, both the U.S. Treasury as well as the Federal Reserve, but particularly the Federal Reserve, which is privately owned and does not belong to the United States government. It's owned by private bankers both American and European. Uh, they have been manipulating the prices of stocks. They have been manipulating the commodity market more to the short side, in other words, betting it was going to go down, than the long side, which would be betting it was going to go up. And what's going to finally come about and will probably be the key to their downfall is the suppression of gold and silver prices. And so, with that said, I think that the stock market is in a position where it's getting ready to come down. And that would affect you if you own mutual funds, <coughs> needless to say, individual issues, insurance policies, because they invest in the stock market as well. Uh, two of the more eminent people in the market uh, who have called the market Richard Russell. He thinks the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which is around 11,000 right now, is going to 1,000. And he's probably got the most successful newsletter in the world with the exception of Harry Schultz, uh, who works out of Europe and has for years. And Joe Granville, who is probably one of the best market timers in history, he says it's going down as well. And so don't I. The only thing that's going to stay up is gold and silver shares. And so people should keep those things in mind. Bonds are going to go down in value because the yields are going to go up in order to attract money. The United States government has been borrowing about $70 billion a week. Next week, they're going to borrow $142 billion. I mean, that's one heck of a lot of money. I don't know where it's going to come from. 
Now, I know that the Federal Reserve, which will not admit to this, bought 80% of the U.S. Treasuries last year. They also bought $1.7 trillion worth of what is called toxic waste, which are syndicated bonds that contain mortgages. They bought them from banks and other lenders to take them off their balance sheets because most of the major banks in the world, never mind the United States, are broke along with the brokerage houses and the insurance companies. Your government is lying to you and the Wall Street is lying to you and we're facing some very, very difficult times. So the market's coming down. I don't know when, but it's coming down. And incidentally, I picked the top of the market at 14,100 when it went down to 6550. I called for 6600. It was pretty close. And I picked the top in 2000 on the market as well when it collapsed. And I was only two weeks away from the top. And of course, getting people out saves them lots of losses. And then they all bought gold and silver related assets. And since that 10 year period, they've made money. Some of them, lots of money. And that's going to continue. The only safe place to be is in gold and silver related assets, period. And I've said the same thing on this program for, I think it's around four and a half years. Something like that. Incidentally, I'm getting some feedback. Okay. And, and so, and so those, those are some of the things that I see on the immediate horizon. Uh, we're having legislation getting passed like the health reform bill, which is going to break everybody in America, including the government. Uh, they're going to uh, start raising the cost of health care. Uh, it's going to be decimating for most families. Uh, sure, they'll have some kind of health care, but it won't be very extensive and it won't be very good. People with chronic diseases will be asked if they'd like to die or if they don't say yes, uh, they just will not treat them. Uh, this is coming. Uh, you might call it the Kevorkian bill. And there was a whole bunch of other real bad stuff in there, like capital controls on your money outside the country and, and things like that, uh, which I won't go into in this particular uh, broadcast. But uh, those are the, some of the things that are hanging over the American and world economy for that matter because no one's going to escape the inflationary depression that we're in, which will be followed a couple of years from now by a deflationary depression, which is one heck of a lot worse. And it will be ten times worse. Yeah, Mr. Chapman, that brings us to a couple of questions right off the bat. Um, sure. Sure. Uh, and uh, if you don't mind, because it's right on what you're talking about, um, this one comes from, uh, from I think it's from Fred. Uh, please ask Mr. Chapman if he thinks those fancy, if those fancy gold and silver collector coins in the shiny plastic boxes uh, and cheap MSXX stickers on them that my 10-year-old nephew could print on his. PC are going to be worth anything more than the bullion coins that I can buy uh, from dealers uh, when a poo-poo has hit the oscillating fan. Uh, I don't. I personally don't think so. What? The, uh, please ask Mr. Chapman if he would answer. Well, first of all, historically, uh, mint state graded numismatic coins, which are in those packages. The last time we had a run in gold in 1980, they didn't exist. But BU Coins did extraordinarily well in that numismatic series. Uh, the average, uh, what is today, an MS-64 saying Gardens went from $500 to 5000 And the price of gold doubled. So you can see this tremendous leverage there. So the answer is... If you have bullion coins in place, 
and I always recommend taking delivery. If you've got that in place, then the next step is to look at the numismatic coins because that's where all the big gains in coins are made. And they're not unusual. Uh, they're not, um, uh, yes, they're collectible, yes, they're numismatic, but they're not rare. And that's a whole different world. Uh, that's a world of coins that that uh, sells for uh, fifteen or twenty or fifty thousand dollars a coin, and um, and that's something totally different. And I don't recommend the average person get anywhere near those. But those coins that are graded, they're they're good coins. Um, 